Okay, if I had to put a title to, to this message, it would be, What Must I Do to Be Saved? Sounds like a pretty simple question, doesn't it? But in today's day and age, you could get a multitude of answers to that question. Now, if we can do the video properly, I'm going to have this little square from the Houston Chronicle, uh, which was an advertisement that was in the paper, and it, so I'll, I'll insert it into the video. But the title is, What Must One Do to Be Saved? Somebody gave this to me Friday night at our uh, Bible study in the Woodlands after the class was over. And um, I don't know, may bring it back next week or maybe just tell them to watch this video. But it, it's a serious question, right? Because at the end of the day, really all that matters, either one is saved or they're not. Their entire, whether they're on this earth 15 years, whether they're on this earth a hundred years, or anywhere in between, at the end of that time period, either they're saved or they're not. Why do we rightly divide the word of truth? To make sure we're answering that question, what must one do to be saved properly? Are we okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Because, let's come back to Houston Chronicle article now. All right, and we are going to use the timeline in this afternoon's uh, discussion here. So they, they uh, you know, the good news is, is they're, they, whoever put this in here, is trying to catch people's attention, what must one do to be saved? And then they're going to give five sets of verses to look at. The key is, are they the right answers to what must one do to be saved in the year 2014. Because there is only one way to be saved in the year 2014. And as we set this up, one of the things I've suggested to you and encourage you every time you see in the Bible the phrase, the gospel, make sure you have, through context, which gospel are they talking about? Because there are many different Gospels in your Bible. It's not one Gospel, Genesis to Malachi. Okay, There are different Gospels. And that's what we need to talk about here in this time frame. So the first thing, what must one do to be saved? And they say, number one, believe the Gospel. Absolutely, amen. Then they give a verse. Mark 16, 16. So let's turn there. Mark 16, 16. You have to determine which gospel is being described. Now this is out of the Houston Chronicle? This is in the Houston Chronicle. Is it an article? Or it's, an ar- it's, it's an advertisement. Okay. Oh, okay. It's the bottom left corner. So the Houston Do you remember what page that was, Kim? I didn't even see that. It's the entertainment section. The entertainment section. <laughs> Uh, bottom left corner, but that was that was a pretty expensive article, right? I mean, to, to get that much real estate on the front page of the entertainment section is right next to the horoscopes. I, I'll bet you that's five hundred to a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, for that size. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. At least it would have been ten years ago. I haven't looked at newspaper ads in ten years, so it's probably gone down. Yeah, but back then it would have been five hundred to a thousand dollars, easy, easy. So anyway, somebody gave this to me. Believe the gospel. Now that's true, but again, which gospel? They say Mark sixteen sixteen. So let's go there and read it. Mark sixteen. Actually, let's start in verse fifteen. No, let's read what they said. Mark sixteen sixteen says. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And that's the first thing they want to list for somebody to be saved. Believe in what? Okay. That would be true. Well, for the rest of the yeah. It, well, so and of course, so let's for which gospel? So let's back up to verse fifteen. And he said unto them. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to each creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not 
shall be damned. Keep reading. And, and, underline that word, and, and, these signs shall follow them that believe. In My name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after that the Lord had spoken unto them, He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Who is He speaking to? You know, context. Let's go back to verse 14. Afterward, He, Christ, appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen Him after He was risen. And He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that is believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So that's the Lord Jesus Christ giving marching orders to the eleven apostles that are still alive. Judas Iscariot is dead. And then He ascends into heaven after that. But He said, These signs will follow. So, again, you got to get the whole context. Christ speaking to the eleven. The Gospel He's talking about is the Gospel of the Kingdom. That is hardly... Question? If somebody reads that, they're going to think that if they believe and are saved, that they have these gifts, and they're able to do these things, and if they can't do those things, then they're not really saved. There are people yeah. that do that. Well, Absolutely. Uh, all right, so for the camera, and that's where we're going in this discussion. <coughs> that's why you got to be following the right gospel. And let me start at the beginning here. The right gospel is as it's laid out in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. Paul calls it 11 times in your Bible. He calls it the gospel of Christ. And you'll only find that term in Romans to Philemon. You will not ever find the term the Gospel of Christ prior to Romans or after Philemon. That is the Gospel of our salvation today. How that Christ died for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15.3 According to the Scriptures and that He was buried and that He was raised again for our justification. That is the Gospel of your salvation. Uh, keep your hand there. It's stay in Mark. I'm just going to go to Romans 1. Keep, keep your hand there and come to me. Or come with me to Romans 1. Again, you always need to see it for yourself in Scripture. Romans is the first book that shows up in your Bible written by this guy Paul. As I say, Romans to Philemon. In verse 15 of Romans chapter 1, Paul says, So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you there at Rome also. Remember that rule. Whenever you see the gospel, make sure you clarify which gospel is he referring to. Let's read the next verse, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Here's that term, gospel of Christ. Paul is referring to the Gospel of Christ. Verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the Gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. That applies to the year 2014. Everyone that believes the Gospel of Christ and trusts in that and that alone for their salvation is saved. And as we know by Ephesians 1.13, the moment you trust in that for your salvation, you're also sealed. Amen. Unto the day of redemption. Nothing you can do to gain your salvation, and praise the Lord, nothing you can do to lose your salvation. That's how we are saved. Now, back to Mark 16. So if this is the birth of Christ, we have the books of Matthew, Mark, where we're in right now, Luke, and John all talk about this 33-year period roughly, from the birth of Christ to the crucifixion of Christ. Then the book of Acts picks up right after that. 
And of course, it's Acts chapter 9 is where that guy Paul gets saved. And he says he's the first one saved by the Gospel of Christ. And he's the first one that goes into the church, which is the body of Christ. We good? Yeah, you're good. Okay, great. So back to Mark 16, 16 and some of the comments that were shared uh, from the room here. So he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. This is definitely talking about water baptism. You know, one I, I've suggested you always make sure you understand which gospel are they talking about. Also, whenever you see baptism, which baptism are they talking about? Because there's water, there's fire, there's being baptized with the Holy Ghost, there's being baptized by the Spirit. You know, there are many different baptisms in the Bible. But Ephesians chapter 4 says, there's one baptism. Which baptism? And it, it is, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, for by one Spirit are ye all baptized into Christ. And let me make sure I didn't misquote that. So I'm going to first, keep your hand in Mark 16, we are coming back there. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, for by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Okay, so for by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. What verse is that? Uh, 13. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. So that's where you know you're baptized by the Spirit. And if there's only one baptism, it's that one right there. Because 1 Corinthians is one of the 13 books written by Paul. It's in this Romans to Philemon time period. Matter of fact, if you were to look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the chapter before, verse 1. Be ye fo- so 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Be ye followers of me, me Paul, even as I also am of Christ. Okay, the way we follow Christ today is to follow Paul. You know, you, you guys always, you Paul worshipers, you're always following Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's what we're told to do by the Scripture. Like 13 times in Romans to Philemon, or 17 times in Romans to Philemon, he says he's the apostle to the Gentiles. Follow me as I also follow Christ. So, if you were to follow Mark 16, 16, a couple of things. Once once again, how people answer the question, what must one do to be saved, is so key. And if somebody follows this and they go to Mark 16, 16, okay, believing, absolutely, that's part of it. But he that is, 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And here it's, and he that believeth the gospel of the kingdom and is water baptized shall be saved. So if you go to today, you know, the Baptists like to use this, Church of Christ like to use this. Now, in their doctrine, the Baptists would tell you that water baptism is just an outward sign of an inward faith, it's not part of salvation. Church of Christ would use the same verse and say, no, you have to get water baptized or you're not saved. Well, by this Scripture, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. It didn't say, he that believeth shall be saved and then get baptized. So I would say to you that the Church of Christ is using that more correctly than the Baptist Church. But again, it's for this time period. Things change. And actually it was also for Acts 2 to... Seven in this time period. That's when the kingdom church got started. Peter and the twelve got right on with it. Acts chapter 2 through Acts chapter 7. And it, it will continue. But at that time, that was the church. The kingdom church. Alright, and verse 17 said, and, underline, and these signs shall follow them that believe. The healings, the handling of snakes, you know, we kind of laugh about it, 
There are. You know, we've got 300 and some denominations. There are. You know, we lived in the hills of North Carolina in a few years, and there were a few churches around there in, in, in eastern Tennessee that would whip out some snakes. So, uh, brother, would you lock the door there, and we're going to get the snakes out of the room back here, and we're going to pass them around the room. And yeah, they're very deadly, but don't worry. We've got Scripture here that says... It says, um, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So don't worry, it's not going to hurt you. And by the way, if it does, we'll just have somebody else lay hands on you, and you'll recover. It says that, doesn't it? If you, if you get snake bit, then you didn't believe. Easy, that's right. You just so, so make sure you, no, you, you, you believe hard enough. But now, you know, we're making <laughs> just yeah. gist of all this. But there's Scripture that says it. So I say, every one of those 300 denominations out there have Scripture that they can go to. They're scriptural. They're just not dispensational. You've got to go find what is the right doc doctrine for the year 2014. And these books are not there. But you can mislead people if they don't understand it, just like this newspaper article. Now, that was just the first one. Question? question. Yes. So, that, uh, this snake situation and stuff like that, that really does happen nowadays. So, do you think that Satan's involved with this? Because if there's a snake and it's poisonous, and you're there, it'll bite you. Absolutely. And there was a newspaper article, oh, we were still, that's before we moved here. Uh, one of the largest churches that does this in, in eastern Tennessee, both, so the father was the pastor of this church, and one week he gets bit and dies, and then the son becomes the pastor, and a few months later, or years later, he gets bit and dies. All right, so, you know, I don't know why people would have continued to stay there. Uh, well, they believe Scripture. They were just believing the wrong Scripture. So, I mean, how do they explain that? that uh, he it's a good faith, question. That he didn't have enough faith, or that there yes. was sin in his life, or... I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they do something to explain it away. Uh, you know, because it does say, you know, you, you, he didn't have enough faith. Right, just like the faith healers. If you have faith, it can move mountains, right? But if you don't have enough, well, he just didn't have enough faith. they got to have some way to explain it away. Or he had sin in his life. Because this doctrine, this doctrine, there is no eternal security in this doctrine. In Hebrews through Revelation, which we'll pick up here, Hebrews through Revelation is the doctrine... For this church that started here will come back in the seven year period of great tribulation. Matter of fact, that's why Peter in Acts chapter 2 stands up, says, This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. First thing he says. What's that? They're talking about the trip. 70th week of Daniel, the time of Jacob's trouble. It's known as many things, but it's the seven year period of great tribulation. Acts chapter 3, 4, 5, as this kingdom church is getting started, every chapter it says, so they sell out and have all things common. And he that had land went back, sold it, brought the, the money to the apostles' feet, and they distributed every man as he had need. Okay, they were having all things common. Why? Because it's the only way they can get through the trib out here. Because you can lose your salvation if you take the mark of the beast. Revelation 20, near the end of the book of Revelation, talks about that. If you want to buy or sell, you have to take the mark of the beast. Take the mark of the beast, you lose your salvation. And the book of Hebrews chapter 6 and Hebrews chapter 10 talks about when you lose your salvation, you do not get a second chance. Amen. Yes, that's contrary to doctrine here because it's for a different time period, a different church in a different time period. It's not a contradiction of the Bible. It's different doctrine. Because it's just, just as the doctrine in Romans to Philemon, most of it is different than the doctrine that Peter and the Twelve taught. It's okay that it's different. It's for a different time period. 
Okay? It's, and it starts with the Gospel of Christ. Alright, so that was the first one. Believe the Gospel of Mark 16.16. 16. Just before we leave the Gospel in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, go back to, to Matthew... And then that would relate, that first one there, that relates to what Ephesians, chapter 4, go ahead. Ephesians 4 5. One baptism? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Just to complete that thought, so Ephesians 4 5 is where it talked about one baptism. Again, for today, 2014, that would be what we read in 1 Corinthians 12 13, for by one spirit are ye all baptized. Not by water baptism, by one spirit. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Okay, so the gospel of the kingdom is what Jesus taught. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's what Peter and the twelve taught. It's what Peter and the Twelve start teaching out here in Acts 2 through 7, the gospel of the kingdom. Go to Matthew chapter 24. <coughs> Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This gospel of the kingdom, here's another part of it. So verse 13, back up a verse. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. They had to endure to the end. They could lose their salvation. Don't worry, you cannot lose it because you're saved a different way. You're saved by a different gospel that is all-inclusive. All the sins you committed in the past, they're forgiven. All the sins you'll commit today, they're forgiven. All the sins you will commit in the future, the rest of 2014, 15, 16, as long as you live or until the rapture of the church happens, they're all forgiven. Amen. Amen. You just need to believe that and trust in that shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ back here. When He died on that cross, and this is revealed in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it was a mystery. They, the Jews, didn't realize when they were killing the Lord Jesus Christ. And He was shedding His blood and they saw it spilling on the ground. They didn't know at that time that that was paying the penalty for the sins that you and I are going to commit, past, present, future. Every one of them. And He took them all to hell. And He left those sins in hell, and on the third day, God the Father raised them for your justification. And whether you believe it or not, your sins were forgiven. You'll be saved from eternal damnation the moment you trust in that and that alone. The moment you stop trying to get yourself good enough to be saved because you can't. Go to Romans chapter 3. Again, Romans is the first book written by Paul that shows up in Scripture. Romans chapter 3. It's not the first one he wrote, but I always encourage people when they first get saved, what should I read? Book of Romans. What should I read next when I finish that? The book of Romans. And when you finish that, read Romans again. After you three times, now read Ephesians. Then Ephesians, then Ephesians. Now go back three times. Romans, Ephesians. Romans, Ephesians. Romans, Ephesians. Okay? That's anybody that you're working with, have them do that. Okay? Now, Romans chapter 3. You know, people that are trying to be good enough And you know, we should all try to be good enough, but just don't expect to earn your way to heaven because you can't. So we should try to do the right things. And we should stop trying to do the bad things out there. The world will be a whole lot better place, but don't think that that has anything to do with your position in eternity. It doesn't. Okay? 
Romans chapter 3, verse 9, verse 10. As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, excuse me. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there's none righteous. And in case anybody here thinks maybe they are, look at the next phrase. It says, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. And in case you think that doesn't apply to you, next phrase, no, not one. Remember, Paul always talks about saved people. Always writes to saved people. There's none that doeth good. You know, even including our families, even including our kids, our parents. There's none that doeth good, especially ourselves. Romans chapter 6. Actually, while we're in Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, I should have read this one first. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For how many people have sinned? All. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All people have sinned. Now Romans 6, also verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. For all have sinned, Romans 3.23, 6.23, the wages of that sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I mean, that's it. There's nothing to do with good. We're all guilty of sin. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Gospel of Christ, Paul told us in Romans chapter 1, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, first of all. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are, not for by grace will you in the future, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Works have no part of your salvation. Go back to Roman, uh, to Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to pick up the end of verse 12. Just to pick the references, who first trusted in Christ. So trusting in Christ is the subject. Verse 13, in whom ye also trusted. Anybody in this room, anybody watching this tape, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. That's it right there. Again, your seal of Ephesians 4.30 would tell you unto the day of redemption. That's how long your seal, the day of redemption right there. The rapture of the church, the calling out of the body of Christ, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The next prophesied event to happen. Okay? We don't know if that's tonight, if it's before the Super Bowl or after the Super Bowl. Okay, we don't know if it's next year. We don't know if it's a hundred years from now. We don't know when it will be. We just know that's the next prophesied event. When the dead in Christ shall rise first, 1 Thessalonians 4, then we which are alive shall meet them in the clouds, so shall we ever be with the Lord. The rapture of the church, the calling out of the body of Christ. But you have to be saved. How do I get saved? It's what we just read. You heard the gospel, but the gospel was preached. How the Christ died for your sins, was buried, took those sins to hell, left them there, and on the third day, God the Father raised Him for your justification. You heard that preached, you believe that. Not just the events, but you believe that when He shed His blood, yeah, you believe He was shedding it for your, for your sins. 
and you trust in that and that alone for your salvation, you're saved right then, and you are sealed right then, all the way until that time period. Nothing you can do to gain your salvation, nothing you can do to lose it. You're saying believe and trust. What's the difference? Brother Moore always had a great, great analogy for believing, going from belief to trust. It's one thing to believe some things, it's another to trust in it. And the analogy he used was the great Walenda. You know, they're the tightrope walkers, and they had a tightrope all the way across Niagara Falls there. And he had a wheelbarrow. How many of you believe that I can push this wheelbarrow all the way across that tightrope to the other side? You know, half the hands. Yeah, I believe you can do it. He goes over there and does it. He's on the other side. How many of you believe I can push this wheelbarrow back? And this time, just about all the hands. I mean, they watched it once. Yeah. Why not believe it? He's got 100% believing it. Yeah, so he's got just about 100% people believing it this time. And he pushes it across, and he gets to the other side, and everybody's cheering and everything. Yeah, he's done it twice now. How many of you believe I can do it again? All the hands. Well, of course, you know, you've done it twice. Okay, who's going to jump in the wheelbarrow? Do you trust? Are you willing to put your life in His hands? It's one thing to believe that, but do you really trust in it? Either, I mean, trusting in the Gospel of Christ. There's a point where you realize, I have never put my trust... I got lost. There's never been a point where I put my trust in the Gospel of Christ alone for my salvation. I realize for the first time, I am lost. I mean, let's face it, anybody... Why would, if somebody knew they were lost, why would they stay lost? I mean, think about, I'll, I'll say us guys in particular, back in the days when we used to use road maps, you know, we're lost, right? And we're lost trying to get to some new town and we just can't find our way. At some point, we got to admit to ourselves we're lost so that we'll stop the car, get the map out of the glove compartment, and open it and look at it so we can find out how to get to where we're going. And find out kind of an analogy, where right? You are, you might and to find out where you are for that matter, yeah. right? But you got to get to the point of realizing you're lost. Oh, I'm not lost yet. You know, how many times can you, you sure you know where we're going? Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just not willing to admit that I'm lost, right? Pride, Stubborn. pride, stubbornness, and stubbornness is as of is as of witchcraft in Proverbs. Wow. Well, hearing the, hearing the gospel is so important. Hearing it, because you can misconstrue being saved with other things, like, well, I'm going to walk an aisle to ask Jesus into my heart. Yes. Then it doesn't really mean anything because it has nothing to do with him dying. Absolutely. On the cross. So it's Amen. Like hearing it, you know? it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Uh, faith cometh by what? Hearing. hearing. Faith doesn't come by just studying. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Okay? We need to be taught like that Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. Understand this out what thou readest? He's reading the book of Isaiah. How can I except some man guide me? Okay, so you put all that together. The Word, the Gospel of Christ is preached. People, the recipient hears it. They believe it. But then there's a point where they go from just believing it to trusting in it. I'm going to get in that wheelbarrow. Either that was good enough for my salvation or I'll just die and go to hell anyway. And Lord, right now, I'm trusting in that and that alone for my salvation because there's never been a moment in time when I did just call upon the name... Romans 10.13 Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, putting all this together. That's Romans 10, 13. Romans 10, 9, and 10. For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the tongue confession is made unto salvation. Okay, so you're putting all these verses together. And there's that time when either that was, you know, Lord, right now I'm calling upon Your name, I'm putting all my trust in that, and that alone for my salvation. 
I'm going to quit trying to dress my flesh up to be good enough for you, and I'm just going to trust because I can't be good enough. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is the right salvation. Okay? Mark 16.16, 16, He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. That was true back here. That was true Acts 2-7. through That will be true out here in the tribulation period. It is not true in the year 2014. It is damnable doctrine in the year 2014. It is for you to know how God dealt with man back here. It is for you to know how He will deal with man in the future. But it is not to you today, year 2014. Paul tells you 17 times he's the apostle to the Gentiles. He tells you in Romans chapter 1 that the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto everyone that believeth. Once this dispensation ends, Ephesians chapter 3, the dispensation of the grace of God in which 2014 exists, this church ends, the church which is His body. It goes back to the kingdom church right after that rapture. Now you can't follow... Yeah, if you could... Thank you. Now you can't follow the Gospel of Christ the day after this event happens. You can't say, oh, you can't realize the rapture happened yesterday and say, oh man, I missed the rapture, but hey, I'm going to trust in the Gospel of Christ today because now I... Well, the program just changed again. It won't work. It's not the Gospel for these people's salvation. I believe, I believe, you understand, I'm not saying necessarily the Scripture that says this, I believe that's one way the Antichrist will confuse these people and will be a delusion to these people is they're going to say, oh yeah, Paul had it right, I'm going to believe that. Just like a person today can't follow the, the Gospel of the Kingdom and get saved, a person out here won't be able to follow the Gospel of Christ and be saved. If they try to, they're following wrong doctrine for a wrong time period, and they'll be lost. They'll believe a lie. They'll believe a lie. Okay? Uh, let me hit... Where's our time here? Okay, we have a little bit more time. Uh, number two here. So I'm going back to what was in the Houston Chronicle. So I'll probably put... The, if I can insert it different places, I'll put it in here. Repent of sins. Acts 17... 30, Luke 13.3. Go to Luke 13.3. Luke 13.3. And He says, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Alright, now, back here it is, repent of sins. <coughs> You always got to be so. Repent alone literally means to change your mind, okay? But to repent of sins, you, you know, you got to stop chewing, stop smoking, stop drinking, stop all these things that are bad, right? Isn't that what many denominate? And don't worry, again, this is not today. Is it a good idea to stop smoking? Absolutely. Your lungs will be a lot healthier. Does that have anything to do with your position with God Almighty? No. I mean, it's that simple. Let me just come to the next one here. Confess the Christ, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Well, we quoted that earlier. So that one, okay, they've got Romans 10, 9, and 10 up here. Thank you. What was number three? Confess the Christ. They also have Matthew 10, 32... Let's go there, Matthew 10.32, under Confess the Christ. Yeah, all of those can be inserted into the video. Great. 10.32 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Okay? That's one you could call transdispensational. Yeah. Alright, but we've got to confess the right things. We've got to confess the Gospel of Christ. Okay? Satan today believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Satan believes that He is the Christ. But that won't save Satan. So it's more. It's the Gospel of Christ. 
It's seeing that shed blood back here as being applied to your salvation. Number four is, be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Wow. Be baptized. Wait a minute, though. There's, they're going to give us plenty of scriptures on this one, and they're all scriptural. They're just not dispensational. So let's look at these. Be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Acts 2.38, first one. Thank you very much. I almost went there a minute ago. So he's got it here. Acts 2.38. Again, it's scriptural. Repent's going to be here as well. Acts 2.38. Again, the Baptists and the Church of Christ fight this one out every day of the week. Is water baptism part of salvation or not? And the Baptists say no. Church of Christ says yes. But this is the verse they're using. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent for the remission of sins and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Is that what it said? No, I misquoted that. Don't you ever let me misquote something. I did that for effect. Okay? But that's how the Baptists think it's stated. Because what it does say is, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now a couple of things. First of all, it's repent and be baptized. So baptism is part of this. But it says for remission of sins, not for forgiveness of sins. There is a difference. Remission of sins is not permanent. Right, Kim? And I, I say, you know, Kim knows all too well from her past. Jesus. <laughs> Praise the yeah. <laughs> Like from that scripture, you have to be getting baptized all the time. Well, if you're repenting all the time, and in Old Testament, even the priests were baptized on a weekly basis. All the time. All the time. It wasn't a one-time thing. Every time. As a matter of fact, on certain feast days, the priest was baptized on the way into the temple, and then he had to get baptized on the way out of the temple. It was a cleansing, a purification. You know, they weren't even... Today, we don't even talk about baptism the way the baptisms were. How do you identify counterfeit $100 bills? Learn what a true $100 bill is. Okay, just like tongues. Today, it's all this jibber-jabber. What were tongues in the Bible? It was a real language. It was a gift. It wasn't jibber-jabber. Healings. Okay? What were healings in the Bible? The men that had the power and the gift of healing, they could heal everyone. Acts chapter 3 and 4 and 5, just the shadow of of Peter passing by them, overshadowing them, would heal them. That was real healing. Go back to Leviticus 21 to see the purpose of healing. Because the people that Peter preaches to with the gospel of the kingdom and out here, they will be a kingdom of priests. Right? First Peter. You you are a, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, royal priesthood, a kingdom of priests. That's who they will be. That's why they're saved, to be a priest. Oh yeah, Leviticus 21. A priest is not allowed into the temple if he has a blemish. He must be healed. That's why there's healings. The purpose of healings. True healings. Okay, so everything you see today are counterfeit. It's almost like the uh, the priest was a uh, a doctor. And then the priest, these signs shall follow them that believe. Yeah, these signs shall follow them that believe. Mark 16, 16. It all fits together. Well, there won't be any hospitals needed. There won't be any needed. See, it all fits together. All this doctrine all fits together. All this doctrine all fits together. All this doctrine fits together within here. But this can't go there. This can't go here. This can't go here. That can't go here. Things that are different are different. They're not the same. Quite a statement. And people just confuse them all the time. Okay, yes, this whole time period is called a mystery. Virtually every component to the doctrine for the church which is the body of Christ is contrary to the doctrine here, contrary to the doctrine there, and it's a mystery hidden scriptures. 1 Corinthians 
chapter 2 tells you why it was hid. Because if all of this was known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And you'd still be in your sins. Actually, we should read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Then we'll go back to the newspaper there. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 tells you exactly why this was hid in Scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7 says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Way back before the world started, this was ordained to our glory. Verse 8, Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Well, if they wouldn't have crucified Him, we'd still be in our sins. Our sins could not have been forgiven. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. He is called the perfect Lamb. They used to remember all, all the way up until then, they're sacrificing animals. As a matter of fact, even after that, the Jews continued to sacrifice animals for, for remission of sins, not for forgiveness of sins. All they could cover were sins past. They couldn't cover the sins they were going to commit. That's why they had to come back to Jerusalem the next year and crucify another. I say crucify, slay another goat. Or bull. Or, you know, there were different animals to slay for different purposes. They were getting remission of sins. Not forgiveness of all sins. If something is forgiven, if a debt is forgiven, can they ever come back to you for that debt? No. It was forgiven. If something is in remission, if an illness <coughs> is in remission, could it come back? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's okay right now, but it could come back. It's in remission. The difference of remission of sins versus forgiveness of sins. Okay, so, so 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8 tell us exactly why it was hid in Scriptures. If it would have been prophesied, you know, it was prophesied that Christ would die. He even tried to tell them he was going to be buried and raised again on the third day, and even the twelve wouldn't believe him. Not so, Lord. Peter even gets a sword out and cuts that guard's ear off, trying to prevent that from happening. They knew nothing about why he was dying. It was a mystery hid in Scriptures. Because had the princes of this world known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. He couldn't have died for our sins. Wow. But even that's not revealed till 20 some years after the event. How about that? 20 some years later, before 1 Corinthians is written, that's when it is revealed. Actually, it may be more like 30 years after. At least 20 years later. Let's just leave it at that. Don't want to get wrapped up in the, the time there. Okay. What were some other ones here? Be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. They give Acts 2.38. They give Acts 22.16. They give Galatians 3.27. They're even misapplying verses. They're, they give 1 Peter 3.21. Let's go to that one. 1 Peter 3.21. 1 Peter's doctrine out here in the seven-year trip. 1 Peter chapter 3. Almost just a few books before Revelation. This is one we talked about. in the questions and answers Friday night after the, the Bible study. So watch the role of water baptism here. Watch the role of water and let the Scripture say what it says. So again, is water part of salvation? Is the water baptism part of salvation? I'm going to answer the question then we'll read. In the year 2014, no. In the year... In the seven-year trib, yes. In times past, yes. In the church, which is the body of Christ, no. Amen. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Okay. 
What I'm going to suggest to you is what we're going to read. Water is absolutely part of salvation. Just remember, it's not for today. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, like they're quoting here. Be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, they are saying in this article in the Houston Chronicle. Verse 21, the like figure. Well, we need to back up to verse 20 to get the like figure. But the like figure is going to be key, so figure out what the like figure is. Verse 20, which sometime were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Everybody remembers the story of Noah. While the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Were souls saved by water? Eight of them. And eight souls were saved by what? Water. Was that physical salvation or spiritual salvation? Physical. They were physically alive on earth. Water. And it was that water that they were physically saved because the whole earth was wiped out. By the way, many historians feel the population of the earth at Noah's time is about what the population is today. That's how many people were on earth at that time. Remember, they lived for hundreds and hundreds of years and had lots and lots of families and they multiplied a lot quicker. Point is, eight. okay, so the end of verse 20. Eight souls were saved by water. The like figure. What's the like figure? Water. Water. Where, so verse 21. The like figure, water, whereunto even baptism doth also, now, save us. Does baptism save these people? Yes. And what is that baptism? Remember, if you ever you see the Gospel or baptism, figure out which one they're talking about. What kind of baptism are they talking about? The like figure from verse 20, water. I mean, that one's pretty clear as can be. Water baptism is part of this person's salvation this person being the one that 1 Peter applies to. 1 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Who is he writing to? 1 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. The Jews. Acts chapter 8. Right When, it, when Paul is wreaking havoc on the church that Peter and the twelve are starting... And it says in Acts 8, they were all scattered abroad. He compared a physical saving with a spiritual. Here it's a spiritual, yes. That, and Oh, thank you. That's a great point. There was physical salvation. There is spiritual salvation. And in this case, their spiritual salvation, 1 Peter 3.21... That is spiritual salvation. It still it goes to water baptism. Okay, so we cannot miss that. All right, so moving ahead here, they also give John three five. Once again, he gives Mark sixteen sixteen, and then he has parentheses. Baptism comes from the Greek word baptisma, meaning immersion. Wow, that's interesting. Full immersion. So he's going to make his case for full immersion there. Verse 5, live faithful unto death. Matthew 10.22. Let's go look at Matthew 10.22. Live faithful unto death. As if that were possible. Remember, your, your verse, I would say that's contrary to what he's saying in verse 5, is Romans 2.8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, Works have no part for you in your salvation. It did back here, it, did in, it will in the future. Where are we again? We are in Matthew 10.22. Matthew 10 verse 22 says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. That was just like Matthew 24. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. That was Matthew 24. We read that earlier. 
Matthew 24, verse 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Do you think they had to endure to the end? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ talking. You know, I had a discussion with a gentleman the other night. Well, I've got a whole lot of red letters I've got to take away. Yeah. You know, if, if I believe Romans to Philemon only for my doctrine today. Yes, sir, you do. And praise God that you get to. Who, who can live by 1022? Who can live by 2413? He that shall endure to the end shall be saved. <clears throat> Even these people here, except those days be shortened, even the very elect would lose their salvation. Yes. Okay. Um, Matthew ten twenty two. So living faithful unto death. So we just read that verse. He that shall endure to the end shall be saved. He also gives Revelations two ten, Revelations twenty one eight. James 2, 14 to 26. James 2, I want to grab that. James 2, 14 to 26. Hebrews, then James. We're not going to read that whole passage. Let's see again. He said James 2, 14 to 26. I'm going to read 14. And then we're going to jump to the end. Verse 14, he poses a question. He says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? Make no mistake, he's posing the question, can faith without works save him? Remember, Galatia, uh, uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we know we can be saved by faith without works. Amen? Amen. In James, he's posing the question. First, read James 1.1. 1, 1. Let's see who this is written to. James 1.1. 1, 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Hmm, sounds like the same people that first Peter is written to. The twelve tribes scattered abroad. To the Jews. He says in James 2.14, Can faith save him? He talks about it. Verse 24. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith alone. Faith only. Totally contrary Romans chapter 3. Go back to Romans. Keep your hand there. I don't know if we're coming back, but Romans chapter 3. Doctrine for you says in Romans chapter 3. Actually, I do want to have them both because I'm going to go back and forth. We're just going to read the verse, then read the verse, come back. Okay? Romans or, or James 2, 24 says, You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Romans chapter 3, verse 28. Justification is the key word, by the way. 328. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Couldn't be more contrary to, to James 2.24, could it? It's the exact opposite. James 2.24. You see then how that by works a man is justified. How is the man justified in James 2.24? Works. works. And not by faith only. Romans 3.28. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Can it be more opposite? Uh, go back to verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do you see how different these doctrines are? They couldn't be more different. Do we need to grab any more? No. Well, is that... That faith that was mentioned there in Romans 3, Steve, is that, yes. is that our faith? Absolutely. Well, great question. So, so the other question that's on the table here, thank you very much. Whose faith is that? Whose faith is that? Go to Galatians chapter 2. One more verse to go with this. Thank you, brother. I know exactly why he's asking that question, because this is great for the tape. You've got to see this. Now, now, two things I want you to see here. 
So Galatians is the first book written by Paul that becomes Scripture. He wrote it in Acts 16, 17, in that time frame. Two things. Are works part of the justification? And whose faith is really the most important here? Watch it. Galatians 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. So do works have any part of justification in Galatians? No. But let's, there's a whole lot more to this verse. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, how is he? But by the faith of Jesus Christ. Not but by faith in Jesus Christ. It's by faith of Jesus Christ. Whose faith are we talking about? Yes. His faith. Who's got more faith, the Lord Jesus Christ or you? <laughs> you know? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out, does it? So that's that one faith. That's, that's the faith right there, absolutely, brother. What is the faith of Christ? He allowed Himself to die on that cross. He had faith, the faith of Christ. He had enough faith in God the Father to allow Himself to die and go to hell. The faith was that God would not leave His soul in hell, Acts chapter 2, it's a quote, but that He would raise Him from the dead. That's the faith of Christ. Amen. And that's what really is our salvation. Amen. The faith of Christ. Now you have to have faith in that. You have to have faith in the faith of Christ. Believe and trust. That's what the rest of this verse says. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. And one more time, the last phrase, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You can't miss it. You, you just I don't understand how people can miss this today. They if they'll just lying. let the Word say what it says, to whom it says it, where it says it. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 See how it all fits together so well. There are no contradictions in the Bible. I hope, if you don't understand rightly dividing, I hope you think there are contradictions in the Bible. Because there are if you fail to rightly divide. Amen. But when you understand, that's why He says to rightly divide. Back here, yes, water baptism is absolutely part of their salvation in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Absolutely is. And in the future, when this church resumes, the kingdom church, after the rapture, after the rapture of the church, come on, Baptist, you believe in the rapture of the church. Water baptism is part of 1 Peter 3.21 whereunto the like figure, even baptism, doth also now save us. Water baptism is not an outward sign for an inward faith. It's for their salvation and it's part of the program out here. And it's back to the Gospel of the Kingdom that the Lord Jesus Christ preached in His red letters in Matthew. He that shall endure to the end shall be saved. And out here... He that shall endure to the end shall be saved. And water baptism's part of it. But in here, the mystery period, it's the Gospel of Christ. Eleven times you have that term, Gospel of Christ, in Romans to Philemon. You have it zero times previous to this. You have it zero times out here. Because it doesn't apply. Is it different than the Gospel here and the Gospel here? Absolutely. I hope you've seen that in the last 45 minutes. But is it for the year 2014? Absolutely. It's the only Gospel for the year 2014. The gospel of the Kingdom will not save anybody in 2014. It will after the rapture of the church. But boy, is that going to be literally hell on earth. That's why we rightly divide the Word of Truth to get the right Gospel for our salvation. And this, anybody sees this article and they follow it, they're, until they, they, they can still come to the Gospel of Christ, but as long as they're following this, never having gotten saved by the Gospel of Christ, they're doomed for hell. It's a damnable 
doctrine. Yeah, that would be like uh, the accursed. They would be accursed. As in Galatians. Thank you. Galatians chapter 1, If any man or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached, let him be accursed. So say I now again, if any man or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached, the gospel of Christ, let him be accursed. Actually, I'm in Galatians. I should go back there. And then he says right after that, verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul never got his doctrine from Peter in the twelve. That's what he just said right there in verse 11 or 12. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jump down to verse 17. He's talking about when he got saved, and he says, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned unto Damascus. Then after three years, three years he's gone. People want to say right away the twelve taught him. No. No. Only the Lord Jesus Christ taught him his doctrine. Acts chapter 9, in that time period. Then in Acts 14, when Paul's shown there in Acts 14, he says he goes up to the third heaven and gets direct revelation again from the Lord Jesus Christ in the third heaven. Wherever that is, but it's way up there somewhere. It's with the Lord. Anyway, that's why we rightly divide. That's why you know opportunities like this are also opportunities to show people the right doctrine, to show them right division. Again, it's scriptural. Every one of these things in here is scriptural, but it's not dispensational to apply it to the year 2014. The Bible makes 100% sense, 100% sense after you rightly divide, and you've got to see, you're not studying your Bible if you don't see contradictions and fail to rightly divide. Because everything in Romans to Philemon. 13 out of 27 of the New New Testament books, almost half, are totally contrary to the doctrine here and the doctrine there. Totally contrary. How is a man justified here? Works, faith and works. How is a man justified out here? James, faith and works. How is a man justified in here? By the faith of Christ and your belief and trust in the Gospel of Christ. Not by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Romans, uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace, gift of God, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It, it's not your faith. It's the faith of Christ. That not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. I'm going to grab one other passage. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Just this whole thing about when you're saved by grace, you're kept. When you're saved by faith, you're kept by faith. When you're saved by grace, you're kept by grace. Romans chapter 11, verse 6. The end of verse 5 talked about the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, if your salvation is of works, then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. If you're saved by grace, you're kept by grace here. If you're saved by works here, you're kept by works. And out here in the future, you will be saved by works, and you're kept by works. And he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. Okay? Any questions on what we've talked about today? It is so simple. Just the Gospel of Christ. Are you going to buy a spot right above that next week? <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> so that was... I know what we could do is put a... We'll buy a spot above it one line that's a, a link to the YouTube video of today. How's that? Yeah, answer, answer to last week's question. Yes. <laughs> no, no, it'd be great to do. It'd absolutely be great to do. I wonder how much that would cost.
Any other questions? Yeah, the answer is at some point, yes. We've got to do that. At some point, we'll do that. Just not next week. <coughs> hey, thanks for being here today. Yeah, you can go ahead and cut the, the video there. But um, that's it. <laughs>